So from 17 once again, this is my Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the second section to research facility, and this is a pretty tough fight. So at the start there is I think four or three of the rocket launcher guys. You want to get rid of them as quick as you can and do Zandatsus on all of them, because if you don't, you'll get hit by rockets. And if I said getting hit by rockets was annoying, I would be understating how annoying it really is. And right here, guys, I'm throwing out parries just to stay alive, and I'm so lucky that I hit that one just then. Oh, shit got serious real quick. And in the the past video, I said these this enemy really close to fuck shit, and that is a perfect example. Could you tell what was happening? I couldn't, and I wasn't even playing. <laughs> you know, I'm watching this back. I played this earlier, and I just couldn't tell. Thank God I was, I was on when I was playing. But you know, once you you get it down to just one of the raptors, dead simple. Then it's just you know when they're all attacking you and it's all fast, you can die so quickly on this difficulty. It's it's definitely up there with the likes of some of the most challenging games I've ever played. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, I didn't find it that bad. But when was the last time you got one shot on a game? You know, it doesn't happen that often at all. It doesn't happen on, on Ninja Gaidens. It has to be something real special to get you on that game. And, you know, Devil May Cry is... I can't remember if I've been one shot on a Devil May Cry. I'm sure I've been very close to it. But this game, yeah, one shots for days. But this is a, a nice little set piece. I did expect there to be more of these, because I, I I wouldn't say it's a fantastic moment in the game, but it's a little bit of light-hearted diversity, and Platinum games are great at stuff like this, and this game doesn't have a lot of it, which I'm really surprised at. For instance, there's they tease a whole bunch of different vehicle sections, and then the game doesn't have any of them. This could have been a mechanic that came back in a, in a couple different levels, and it, it just never does. It's a one-off, it's pretty interesting, it's kind of fun. You could have even had a section where you had to stealth with the tiny robot. The, there was a lot of potential for it, but it just it never shows up again. And I found that very strange considering that, you know, chapter 5 is a mission that you can beat in under 7 minutes, chapter 6 is a boss which you can beat in under 2 minutes, and chapter 7 is, you know, one hanger and then a, a sequence of bosses. So the last three levels of this game are criminally short, unbelievably short, and I've just found out that there's DLC being planned, which I'm really excited for because it's more content. And that you're going to get two chapters where you get to play as uh, Jetstream Sam, which I think is a fantastic idea. It just makes me wonder, you know, what chapters are they basing this length off of? Is it the first two chapters where the game was actually quite, you know, pretty hefty chapters, an hour each? Or is it the last two chapters, which, you know, culminates in about seven and a half pence? It just seems. I'm not too sure. And a lot of people on forums and things are saying that the game feels rushed. The game doesn't feel rushed at all. You know, the game feels perfect. The game feels as precise and as amazing as it can be. A lot of people are, are critiquing the environment, saying that they look boring and they look rushed and, you know, there's no art or anything. But what you've got to bear in mind, guys, is they're using the aesthetic that was set in Metal Gear Solid 4. And, and Metal Gear Solid 4 was a pretty drab game. Not in a bad way, just in kind of a PMC you know, war economy kind of way, and what this game does is not only does it, you know, give you these areas to fight in, which is the real focus, but it also allows you to chop pretty much all of them up, so they're okay generating, you know, this fantastic art for every single different room and it all being beautiful and brilliant, but as soon as you start chopping shit up, there is no way in hell this game would run at 60 frames per second. Because the sequences now, when you get too chop happy, where the frame rate does dip, but it's infinitely you know, better than it could have been. Like if From Software had made this game, it would run at about 6 frames a second. But that's why Platinum are amazing and you can't be mad at them for, for having you know uninspiring looking environments to fighting because it's not the emphasis here and it's all... it's not necessarily s sacrificing art for fidelity but it's definitely helping the technical side. But this is the grad boss and if you can land a parry on this guy Good night. It's just game over. He's a very fun enemy to fight. He fights pretty much fair as long as you, you, you suck him off, as long as you stay very close to him. As soon as he gets distance, he'll start to cheese you with rockets and things. I'm not a fan of that. 
I don't know if you noticed what happened there, but when I did the counter, I think I hit both of them. So they were both just waiting for me to Zandatsu them, which is always cool to see. And, God, I love this game. This game is so much fun, guys. Even if it's not your thing, give it a try. Uh, this corner here, you're going to notice something. There is two hammer guys and a rocket launcher guy. And the rocket launcher guy is one of those guys I don't like. I've already mentioned, I don't think you can parry the hammer guys, and if you can, the timing on it is so anal, it seems pointless. So instead of doing whatever that fight wants you to do, I went in with Ripper mode, because they can kill you so quickly, and fuck them. But this is the end of the level, I hope it's helping, and you take care now.